Did they just find a cure for HPV? Not quite. Hi, thanks for watching today. I want to talk about a story that I read yesterday about a cure for HPV. Uh, here we go. After 20 years, this Mexican doctor found 100% cure for cervical cancer and human papillomavirus. It's a medical breakthrough unlike any other, one that effectively puts an end to cervical cancer among women. After 20 painstaking years of research, Eva Ramon Gallegos, a Mexican scientist, has finally developed a cure to eliminate 100% human papillomavirus and prevent the spread of cervical cancer among women. If that is all true, that is fantastic news for everyone. But, unfortunately, that's a little bit overstated. Okay, According to uh, Cancer Health here, they wrote an article explaining what the actual findings of the study were. And it's very complicated. You know, one of the things, I didn't go to medical school, I'm not a doctor. And when you look into this stuff, it really should be explained in a way that people can understand. And what I found is, like most journalism, it's not done very well. You know, when I looked into this, a lot of this didn't really make sense to me. HPV, it's a sexually transmitted disease, and what they say is that most people that are sexually active have it at some point in their life. Um, but also, there's no test for men, and often there's no sign that you have it. So they're saying, everybody's got it. There's no test to show that you do have it, and there's no sign that you have it, but trust us, you have it. I would like a better explanation than that, but there doesn't seem to be a better explanation. In fact, no one can even seem to agree on the number of types of HPV there are. According to the Centers for Disease Control, there's over 100, right? According to this uh, Cancer Health site, there's over 150 different types of HPV. And according to Planned Parenthood, there's over 200 types of HPV. That's, that's a bit confusing to me. We should probably have a ballpark idea of the number of types, or at least an explanation as to why different organizations think that there's a different number. But there's none of that. There's no reporting on that that I found. This research that took place in Mexico City, what they did is they specifically dealt with two types of HPV. Uh, these two specific types often would lead to cancer, and so that's what they concentrated on. And they used a photodynamic therapy to treat it. What that is, is it's using a drug that's either topical or an injection that they would put around the lesion and then use a light that would be tuned to a specific frequency that would activate the drug to fight the cancer cells. And they were very successful in what they did. And so that is what they are putting out, not that they've cured cervical cancer and HPV, uh, but in this very specific use, in these very specific cases, they had a lot of positive uh, findings. Now, one of the best things to avoid HPV is to get a vaccine if you're a kid, uh, up to 12, I think. There's actually a newer vaccine that uh, came out recently for people up to 45 years old. So if you're in that age group, you may look into that. HPV can sometimes lead to cancer, and so that would be a very effective vaccine to get. Most of the different types of HPV apparently aren't a big deal, and they go away. It deals with warts and, and things like that, but some of them are very dangerous. But the main thing that I took away from this article is how poor <laughs> medical journalism is, because I really tried to look into this and find out about it, and I found a lot of really bad reporting. So if you're looking for a career <laughs> and you understand medicine, consider medical journalism because there's a, there's a great need for it out there. But I just wanted to share these findings with you because I, I found them pretty interesting and optimistic. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Peace. You can help me reach my goal of 1 million. Make that 4,000 subscribers by hitting the like button and subscribing. Thanks.